On Tuesday, you sent some representatives from your office and they and held constituent case hours here in Flint where assistance could be provided to them on federal programs and agencies such as Medicare, Social Security, the IRS, and more. How'd it go? What feedback did you get? Uh, it went uh, very well. We had a number of individuals uh, come in with a variety of cases. Uh, we were happy to have uh, people on the ground there in Flint to, to do that. We uh, hope to continue to do that on a regular basis. You know, I, have an, I have an office in Flint. We have a couple outreach folks there. Most of my casework is done in our larger Detroit office, but it's uh, important for me to get people out in the community, and that's why uh, we were pleased to be in Flint and look forward to continuing to do that. But the folks should feel free to call my office uh, anytime. In fact, we, uh, we now have a toll-free number, too, so people... Uh, if they have any issues with the federal government, whether it's Social Security or Medicare or the VA uh, or the IRS, uh, to call our office. If I could, I, I'd love to give the number over the air. Yeah, go right ahead. So that would be uh, 844-506-7420. Again, that's 844-506-7420. But that's a big part of what we do uh, is we're, we're the advocates uh, for folks and uh, the federal government, you know, kind of uh, managing or navigating the bureaucracy can be a challenge, uh, but we, we will be uh, their advocate. Give us a call. We will do everything we can to help. Well, speaking of the federal government, obviously it's an election year. Also on Tuesday, uh, former Secretary of State, former New York Senator, and uh, former First Lady Hillary Clinton winning the California primary and I kind of put her over the top and becoming the presumptive Democratic nominee for president. I'd uh, like to hear your comments there. Yeah, I think it's uh, very clear now. The math is very clear. Secretary Clinton will be the Democratic nominee uh, when she will come out of the convention uh, in July as the nominee. And I'm sure we'll have a very robust uh, election in the fall, but I'm confident she will win and look forward to, to uh, her being sworn in as our next president. Reports that President Obama meeting with uh, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders today. Can the Democrats unify? Can they all get on the same page? We've heard a a lot of talk, to be honest with you, on the Republican side. Can the Democrats unify now? Oh, I'm confident uh, Democrats will unify. I think uh, certainly Senator Sanders, uh, the last thing he would like to see would be Donald Trump as president. Everything Bernie Sanders stands for is not what Donald Trump stands for, so he's not going to allow that to happen. Uh, I expect uh, he will begin the process of uh, supporting uh, uh, Secretary Clinton. His supporters uh, will hopefully uh, do the same, but uh, you know now is the time to, to start that, and I'm confident it will happen and we will be unified. I know we've only got you a few minutes longer. Let's move on to some legislation that you've introduced. A lot of discussion out there. We've been hearing it more and more over the past few years about cyber threats. You, along with Louisiana Senator David Vitter, introduced a bill to bolster small business cybersecurity. Tell our listeners a little bit about that. Yeah, it's something I'm, I've uh, focused on from day one here. I serve on the Senate uh, Homeland Security Committee. Uh, so uh, it's something I think about daily. It's without question perhaps uh, our biggest threat that we face to the homeland is cyber threat uh, from hackers and people who want to do uh, harm to us, uh, steal bank records, uh, and uh, interfere with our day-to-day business. We have to be vigilant in standing up against that. And uh, and that's what this bill really does, but it focuses on an uh, area of vulnerability that unfortunately does not get talked about enough, and that's our small business. Mm-hmm. You know, the, uh, the bad guys are always looking for the path of least resistance to, to do bad things, and if everybody doesn't fortify their system, they can use that to get into bigger systems. If you're a big company, you have very sophisticated cybersecurity. Mm-hmm. You probably have people on the payroll to do that. But quite frankly, a small business just doesn't have the resources to do that, and yet there are some things that every small business owner should be doing. They should have access to that information. They should have access to the knowledge necessary to harden their system. And that's why our bill works with the Department of Homeland Security and the Small Business Administration really to actively engage the SBA to reach out to our small businesses to make sure that they have what they need to protect their systems from hacks. And I, I should point out it's a bipartisan bill, and that's one of the things I like when you when you work with those across the aisle. 
and uh, and help the small businesses. As you said, uh, big companies have the resources and the tools to to help prevent from that sort of stuff. And uh, small businesses, it needs to trickle on down to them. Let's also talk a little bit about the National Defense Authorization Act. And and you introduced an amendment along with some others, ensuring fairness for veterans erroneously discharged from the military. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, how often does that happen? I was reading your press release and, and really kind of shocked, actually. It is, uh, it is shocking, uh, the numbers. I mean, some folks uh, estimate it could be as many as 20,000 individuals that are in this case. Uh, and, and what it is is that a, a service member um, may have been discharged uh, from the military with a less than honorable discharge because of some behaviors that they were engaged in that led to that. And yet it uh, turns out that oftentimes uh, those behaviors may be related to PTSD. They're some of the classic symptoms. Depression, for example, is a classic symptom of PTSD, severe depression. And that can lead to people not showing up and muster or, or engaging in behaviors that lead to them being dismissed from the military on a, on a less than honorable basis, but it was because of the injuries that they serve or they, that they receive from their service, um, traumatic brain uh, disorders, et cetera. And so what this bill does is it says that if that's the case and you have medical evidence to show that you are indeed suffering from PTSD, that you can go back to the Department of Defense. The Department of Defense has to open up that record, take a look at the evidence you have, do whatever screening is necessary to determine whether or not that is the case. And if it is, uh, change it, because if, uh, if uh, you are not uh, discharged uh, honorably, you do not have access to the very specialized services of the VA to help our men and women who are suffering from these, uh, from these conditions. So this is doing right by veterans. Veterans have served us, uh, and if they have these uh, invisible wounds of war, uh, the American people, uh, we have to say it loud and clear, we stand behind them. Well, we always appreciate your help uh, for veterans, of course, yourself, a former lieutenant commander in the U.S. Navy Reserve, and uh, to get the help for veterans that they need after so honorably serving for our country, uh, it's important. So we appreciate you looking out for them. I know you've got a vote to get off to. I'm going to let you off the phone. But as you said earlier, let's not wait so long till next time for our conversation and, and look forward to future conversations, Senator Peters. Well, I appreciate it, Jason. Always a pleasure to be on your program. Thank you for all the good work uh, you do in talking about issues that are important to, to, the, to the people. I all appreciate right. it. All right, Senator Peters, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye now.